Good day to you lovely demon hunters. My name is Foxall. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to some more Peak of Combat, or better known as Wallet May Cry. The game trying its best to separate your cash from your wallet and make you cry. Today's video, if you can read from the title, we're going to be hitting a very hard topic that, oh boy, I don't think a lot of you are ready for. And that, that, question that has been plagued to me in many of live streams is why do i suck at peak of combat why can i not do this type of damage what what am i doing wrong so this is just a basic video that we're just going to analyze some of the biggest problems that i've seen with players in this game and we're just going to get straight into it and hopefully make you a better peak of combat player after this your motivation so in all honesty when it comes down to it it is it all really comes down to one thing and one thing only a lot of people who's coming into peak of combat you're legitimately coming into this more with the mindset that this is straight up the all may cry one two three four and five you're you're coming into a game thinking that you're playing an actual DMC game and you're not you're coming into a game that is more of a bare bones system it is a bare bones version of Del May Cry it is a gotcha system but with that being stated a lot of people are missing key factors in this and one of the big key factors they're missing is and I hate to tell you this but a lot of you don't read you can get a hundred times better by just going to ahead and reading. And what I mean by that is that if you've watched my video so far a couple of times of me going through watching a live stream where I'll stop for a while and I'll go through, you know, a talent list. I'll start reading every single grade, every rank of a character. I'll understand what is trying to say, like, for example, at SSS here, it says right here, after activating no shadow, you increase physical damage by 23%. I'll read right here. When uh, Endless Judgment enters battle, increase physical damage by 25%. This is a big key problem that I see a lot of people just don't realize. Like, they come into this and they just start playing. They're not worried about a character build. They're not worried about A, B, C, D. They're not worried about reading. So that's why you got a lot of fucking randoms that when you go into challenge, you go into co-op, that you'll come into this. You're trying to get your weeklies done. You know, you're trying to get your dailies done right now for DMD. And you want to get your hell weapon and everything, but you can't get past, you know, the fucking first, the, the last boss in this because nobody has bothered to go do any kind of research on your team it seems like they are attacking the red eye orb and they're hitting the laser and the laser's hitting them and they never even would bother to run to the boss and it's like oh god i'm stuck with fucking randoms that don't know shit because they don't go bother to come click a button right here they don't bother to go watch a youtube video they don't go bother to go on a reddit posting to go read that hey with the hell fifth for example on the second phase you know, after a player breaks shield on the eye of the abyss, the eye will lock onto a player and fire concentrated laser. If the player manages to guide the laser beam toward, uh, from both eyes towards the hell fifth, she'll enter a weakened state. It tells you right here. There's been many videos, I'm sure, on YouTube, not just myself, that has posted this. There's been forums. The official Discord has expressed this with people. And the main purpose of this is that people don't read. There is a lot of different things. You can read different things about different events. What does this mean? What does that mean? What is this? What is that? And that's what it all comes down to. And a lot of people suffer from, you know, lack of reading. I hate to say, like, they're going to be like, why didn't, you know, why I didn't get my eternal nightmare? You know, and I got, you know, a... Uh, a fist of salvation well you didn't come over here and read how it works did you that's a 50 50 and do you but you do you realize that the next time you pull on that banner you're guaranteed to get a v you know it is different things here and this is the main problem with peak of combat when it comes to people is that they don't bother to read 
another problem when it comes down to players of Pika Combat that, you know, they're having issues here and there, is that they're not doing math. Prime example is, is that you see this Dante right here. Do you realize that this Dante has 11% crit rate with 141% crit damage, but yet, in all honesty, my Dante has 100% crit rate, and he actually has an additional 20% of crit damage on top of this. Because you know why? We go read. We read that, you know, he's at EX, he gets an increased physical damage 70%. At SS Plus, he gets an increased physical damage. Uh, physical damage to targets takes 30%. At SS, he gets an increase to 20% of defense and 60% crit rate while if activating Devil Trigger. And we do the math. And we look at the damage. We look at what cards we have. We read what cards. You know, we, we go through this in a whole variety of different ways. This is what we do on our live streams all the time. We talk about our builds. We have a Discord. We're not just here to play the game. We're here to learn and understand a system behind the game. So this is an advertisement to, in a sense, to everybody. If you want to learn more about the game, like, I'm not always 100% right. My stream corrects me sometimes, and we, you know, we discuss it. I take responsibility. But come to the live streams if you want to be educated more about the game and find out where you're going wrong, because DG... A lot of people don't realize, you know, hey, the demon book actually works really well to help out with your your extraordinary demon hunters, such as like, you know, Devil Bringer. We got a 240% a boost of damage to our devil trigger because of the book. Because of the runes. This is two real big key factors. Is people don't like to read and people don't like to do math. Using this crap like Genshin Impact of saying, oh, do the 2-1 ratio and such, blah, blah, blah. Th that's just the lazy man's say version of saying, hey, I don't want to do the math. Just make sure you know you got, you know, half the crit rate that meets the crit damage. So if you got 100% crit damage, you need to at least have a 50% crit rate. I mean, that's basically what they're saying, but they're not actually doing the mathematics behind it. They're just being lazy. That, that, that's all it is. There's other things in this game that, you know, people lack. And one of the biggest things that people, you know, really don't seem to understand is that you'll come click the strategy button, you'll come look at a suggested card list, but do you realize that you don't have to build this card? You don't have to use this card list. It's suggested, but that's the developer's suggestion. You know, it doesn't mean you actually have to do it because look, for example, suggested cards on my Royal Guard, right, is the Bear Wolf set. Okay, and the reason for that, you know, we look at it. I got the Phantom set. Why do I have the Phantom set over the Bear Wolf cards? It's because, in all honesty, I want the increased physical damage of sixteen percent. I'm looking at, you know, the additional crit rate of twenty and twenty and twenty percent for crit damage with there and have an active bleed gauge. And I'm looking at it mostly for raids, not for PVE. There is different factors. You don't have to do the developer's suggestion. You could build whatever you want. This is the end game. You could go ahead and if you really want to, you could put the Severus cards on Royal Guard, even though it's an ice card. But four cards of it gives you, you know, if your health's above 50%, you get an additional 24% overall damage. You know, the Minotaur card set's the only one that looks like you couldn't really use it per se for something else. But Nevin card set, so it's a support card set. After hitting the target with an ultimate skill, increase overall damage by 70% for the entire lineup. But that doesn't work for Dante because, in all honesty, he doesn't have an ultimate skill. His ultimate skill is his devil trigger, but it's not going to proc because it's not a skill. It's just a transformation. Beowulf, the reason why they're suggesting it on, you know, Royal Guard. It's after hitting a target with a QTE skill, the you increase physical and elemental damage against a target uh, by 60% for the next 16 seconds. That's really good, but in the same principle, you know, I'm doing more damage with my Royal Guard than he's ever had with the Bear Wolf set by using the Phantom card set because it works well for him. Because we get increased physical damage. The cards work. 
You don't have to build like everyone else. You have to look at what your play style is, what you like. If you like the Bear Wolf set, you like going with the recommend set the recommendations, go for it. If you don't, you know, look at other things. Look at a build. You could put the Phantom Card set on Nero and make his main combo of which is a physical build boost from that. It'll make his exceed in this fire damage sucky, but his main form of attack would just multiply from the cards you additionally add to it. When it comes to Virgil, you don't have to build him as a crit character if you really don't want to. You could build him in another scenario. You could build him as a tank if you really needed to. It all depends on what you're comfortable with, what, what you want to do. There is some things I would suggest over other things personally, because it makes no sense to use a Nevin card set, really, in my personal opinion, on a character on like characters if I'm gonna go into boss raid, because you know, it don't pay to use Bear Wolf because there's no QTE I'm gonna use in a raid, so I might as well use Phantom cards. There's different things about the builds that you can do. Do you realize that there is two good weapons for Dante? Do you realize that the hell weapon, yes, it has better stats. It's a better weapon in general. It's a hell weapon. But if you're going to use Dante more as a support, we also have the, we can also look at using the legendary version, which has a support benefit to it. That they increase overall damage by 2%, but when, you know, the hunter triggers another hunter's QTE, it increases overall damage of the hunter who entered through QTE by 4%. And then, you know, you max that out. It goes all the way up to 16%. So maybe you might want to use that blade over the hell blade for damage because you want to boost your damage from your QTE to across all hunters. See what I'm getting at? You can build differently. You can do a lot of different things. The main key point of the reason why people really lack in this is because they don't take the time to sit here to read the units that they have, the units that they're building up. They don't take the time to look at their builds and say, hey, what if I try this and do this and see what you get at? You don't have people who's going to take the time to do the math. You're not going to have people who's going to take the time to go read about the boss rate and how to actually deal with the problems because they keep failing here. And this is the reason why, like, to become a better player, you need to slow down a little bit. You can't just, you can, but I wouldn't, I would totally recommend against just picking this game up, rushing into it and beating the shit out of things and going, yeah, let me go rush in. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. And then a month down the road, you're trying to figure out why you suck at the game. When in all honesty, the reason why you suck is because you never took the time to read, to do the math, to figure out your build. To figure out the strategies behind different boss raids of different you know bosses you know there's just some things that you cannot lax on and expect to be good at it okay so three key points of why you suck at dmc a you haven't read b you haven't properly gone ahead and worked on your build and did the mathematics to make your build work. Steve, you haven't really looked at everything like the demon book. And in general, you know, the last real thing that really makes you suck at Delmic Cry is that you're too focused that it's more pay to win than it is free to play and you're not enjoying the game because you'd rather be negative than then try to find a positive. Just gonna say. All right, guys, y'all take it easy. Y'all have a good one. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.